If I ask everybody in here how you get to work every day, most people would say that you drive. If I ask you why you drive, you would say that it's the most efficient way to get around. Which is true, it is the most efficient way to get around, but you drive because you don't have a choice. Because the transportation system around you has been built for cars. If you look at the streets around here, there's not a lot of sidewalks or bike paths. The bus is unreliable and everything is far away, so it's inconvenient. This is right off campus here in stores. You can see there's a bike and pedestrian path, and there's bus stops, which is great, but where are the buildings? Everything is spaced out so far away that it's inconvenient for us to drive, for inconvenience for us not to drive. Now, why does it matter? Why does it matter if someone chooses to drive or walk? Well, it's all about sustainability. We all know that cars are bad for the environment because they contaminate the air and they use up a lot of fuel. Now, the problem with that is that fuel is a finite resource, which means that we only have a limited amount of it here on Earth. And according to a lot of researchers, we've already used up half of all the supply that we have. And if we keep using it the rate that we're using it now, we only have 34 years left of fuel. That's crazy. That's within our lifetimes. So we need to be a lot more careful with how we use our resources. One way to do this would be to use more fuel-efficient cars. But the problem with fuel-efficient cars is that if we use less fuel, then we might encourage ourselves to drive longer distances. And then in the long run, we're going to end up using the same amount of fuel just because we can afford it. So the best alternative would be to build sustainable and livable communities, places where people don't need a car to drive around. Now, I went to Spain last month, and it was amazing to see how different people moved around in Spain. In Madrid, everybody walked, which was really amazing to me, because Madrid is a pretty big city. It's, it's over 3 million people. In a city of that size in the United States, you would see traffic jams everywhere. But in Madrid, there weren't really a lot of cars. It was really amazing. Now, that, part of that is due to density but it's also because of the way that the city is built. In Madrid, you have a lot of places that are built for people, not just for cars. You have a lot of pedestrian pe streets like these and a lot of shared spaces, spaces where you see a lot of cars, people, and bikes using the same space together. And you also see a lot of squares. There are places where act people actually want to spend their time, not just pass by. Even if you go to the outside parts of the city, you still see the same sort of design. You see wide medians that are places where people are willing to spend time, where there's restaurants and it's comfortable for people to walk around. It's built for people, not for cars. In Barcelona, there's a lot more cars, but there's also a really good public transportation system. Barcelona has about the population of Atlanta, but Atlanta takes up 18 times more space. That's crazy to think about. And in Barcelona, you don't need a car to move around. If you're in the downtown area, Everything is accessible. You can walk everywhere. There's narrow streets and a lot of close intersections, so it's really easy to move around. Even at the outside parts of the city, everything is still built for own modes. You have wide meetings that are comfortable to pe for people to walk like Madrid. You have exclusive lanes for bikes and taxis. You got exclusive bike lanes and a good bike share program. So in Barcelona, you don't need a car to move around either. In a lot of other places here in the United States, they, they do have some good initiatives towards sustainability. Cambridge and Portland are great examples. And in DC, they're actually putting in a lot of new bike lanes and they got a good bike share program. So we do see these advances, but the difference between places that are sustainable and places that are not is the mentality. People in the United States feel like they need a car in order to move around. Now, in a lot of places in Europe, people don't feel like they need that car. I have a good friend that's from Verona. Now, he has a car, he loves his car. He loves the freedom that you get from a car because it's hard to compete with public transportation. But he doesn't use his car all the time. He only uses it whenever he leaves the city. Whenever he walks, whenever he needs to get around within the city, he always walks because it's the most convenient way to get around. So this goes to show you that in order to change our cities and make them more sustainable, we have to change our mentality and change our behavior. When planners look to see where they spend their money in transportation, they look to see whatever has the biggest necessity for improvement. If there's a lot of cars on the road, they're gonna spend their money on widening the street. And for the first time ever, that number is actually going down. The number of cars being used is going down, which goes to show you that people actually wanna live in these sustainable and livable communities. What we need to do is we need to keep that trend going. And how do we do that? Well, I encourage everybody here to take the bus to work every day if you can. Even if it's a little inconvenient, it's over a long time, it's gonna be better because planners are gonna see the bus ridership going up. So instead of spending the money on winding a street, they're gonna spend money on improving the bus service. Now, what we need to do is to show the planners, planners that we want to live in these places. If you move to a new downtown area, 
try to move into one of these sustainable places where you can bike and walk everywhere. In order to change our cities and make them more sustainable, we have to be willing to change. Thank you.